Today we are installing our nicely painted brakes. Hi everyone, welcome to the channel about kick cars and other car topics. If you like what you see, please subscribe and hit the notification buttons below. I'm really excited because we're finally going to get these brakes onto the car. You know, the, the rear brakes were back ordered for like, I don't know, a while, long time. It was the last thing they actually come in. And then I was able to get them nicely painted. And so now we're going to install everything on the car. Now that the front end's dialed in, now that the rear's dialed in, we just have to add some brackets to the rear. Uh, the front's just bolt on, but the backs do have some brackets that we have to put on, which I've already painted uh, with the gray color originally in my first uh, spray booth painting. So let's get started.
So one thing I'll say is the actual uh, front brakes instructions, phenomenal, perfect. Everything's, you know, dotted I's, cross T's is great. The rear brakes suck. Uh, they, they don't really explain much. I'm having a hard time getting uh, the little, I don't know what you call it, the little metal flanges that you grease up so, so the brakes ride on it. I can't even get them to fit without falling off. So the instructions actually don't even say to install them. So right now I'm not going to install them, uh, which I'm sure is not, not correct, but I'm going to go ahead and get the brakes on. And um, the other thing is with the rear brakes, they're Mustang brakes, but when you go to look online, I can't find anything that's exactly like it. All these brakes are like 10 to 20% different. They all look similar, but they're not. And so I can't find anything that's the exact same brake to look up better instructions or anything like that. So in any case, there isn't a little alignment I have to do on one side to get it perfectly centered on the calipers. And so I have to do that, add some spacers, and then uh, from there, we'll see how it goes. And then I'll finalize some stuff later on. So it's a different day and I'm still working on the brakes. And in the meantime, I've emailed Factory 5 and my guy emailed back, well, you know, uh, just blow off the abatement uh, plates, which is, you know, the, the metal shims. 
and uh, I wasn't down with that. So I talked to a brake expert and uh, he was saying that, you know, you really don't want to do that because the metal of the caliper itself is soft enough that the, uh, the pad after so many uses will actually create a groove. And then what will happen is when you go to press the brakes, it will pop into this groove and feel really clunky and not be smooth. And so, you know, I told him what my clearance issues were and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, normally I would just be like, oh, let's grind, grind down the side of the, the brake pads, which is actually fair game. But there's certain angles to it and all that stuff. And I don't have the equipment to get that angle perfect. And um, so what I'm going to end up doing is using the abatement plate on the one side. And the one side that I'm going to be using it on is a side that the force of the wheel is going to be pushing against. So in this case, since I think on regular Mustangs, these brakes are on the opposite side, they're on the back side, and in the 33 hot rod, they're on the front side. So I'm going to be putting the abatement plate, just one of them, on the bottom area because that's the motion of the wheel hitting that bottom area. And the second thing that comes with that is it will be easy for me to install that because gravity, it will be sitting on the bottom and not on top, which was impossible for me to get in anyways. Uh, if and, and that's basically because the pad's too big, but if it wasn't too big, I'm sure it would be a little bit finagling, but it'd be easy to do within minutes. So I'm just gonna keep digging in and uh, hope for the best here. All right, so you could blow off a little bit of what I was saying in the last area. Basically, grinding the brake pads is really not that big of an issue. It took me less than like two minutes to grind them down. What happened is when I went to the second brake caliber, even getting one abatement plate, I, I couldn't get it in. The pads were too big. Now, here's where I get a little bit about principle, and, and, and this is probably why I was told to like just blow off the, the abatement plates is you know, I've changed brakes my whole life. I've never gone to the store, or brought brake pads back and couldn't fit them into my car. They always fit perfectly. And so here I am on this system and they're nowhere near fitting. And I'm like, did you send me the wrong pads? Is this the wrong model? Like, I don't know what's going on. And so I get stuck myself. This is my own thing where I get stuck in principle. And it's like, well, I shouldn't have to be modifying my brakes. Safety issue, right? So these are the things that go off in my head. But at the end of the day, I couldn't get the second one in. So I went over, got the grinder. I put my, my handheld grinder in the vise, locked it down. And then I just went bzz, 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 bzz. And five seconds later, I'm putting the brakes in and I'm like, I'm just creating a bunch of noise <laughs> with tech support, but I could just go over there and be done with this and put it in. So at the end of the day, if your brake pads don't fit, just do a little slight, very slight. Cause we're talking about just, just 
quarter of a millimeter, basically, thousands of an inch. Uh, you just need to take the paint off, basically, and then they'll slide right in. So use both abatement plates, just do a hair grinding, and you should be good to go. However, don't take my advice. Do this at your own, own risk. I take no responsibility for that advice. It was easy peasy. So have a great day. See you next time. Thank you.